Good evening, everybody, to all of us who share in this moment, uh, to our wonderful congregations, uh, New Calvary Baptist Church, First Baptist Church, University Park. Um, we are delighted to share with you tonight, uh, and I am the Reverend Dr. William Marcus Small, Senior Pastor of New Calvary Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia. I am Reginald Wade Williams, Jr., Senior Pastor of First Baptist Church of University Park. Glad and, to be with you. Glad to be here this evening. Yes, and we are here with this third installment of this Bible study series. This is our story. This is our song. We are excited about sharing with you all uh, and talking about examining the spiritual significance of liberation through song in the African-American or the African diaspora today as we expand that experience throughout the diaspora because today, we are looking at international music. We are looking at international music uh, and looking at it as songs of global movement, uh, songs of global movement as we will talk about. And hopefully as you come to understand, there will be, uh, you will understand that the movement of liberation is not restricted exclusively uh, to African-Americans, but to people across the globe uh, who are people of color uh, who are trying to fight the systems and the structures uh, that they find themselves uh, subjective to. And so we tonight thought it would be good that we expand because we are fans of all kinds of music. And that being said, want to just put this disclaimer, we are disclaimer. <laughs> we are not ethnomusicologists. We are just two <laughs> brothers uh, who preach the gospel, who love good music. And so uh, we are sharing tonight all right. Uh, Pastor Williams, anything you want to say or share before we get rolling? Uh, no, let's 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 get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into right, it. Right. Let's, James Brown said, let's get into it. Get involved. All right. Get involved. So, yeah. so we're going to talk about real quick. Um, just looking at um, some some refresher, we talk about what music does and how music empowers, uh, and we understand that music, uh, as intricate it is in our lives, it does a couple of things. It inspires us, it informs us, it instruct us, instructs us, and it invites us. It inspires us to challenge new things and to see new things and to do new things. It informs us and gives us information that we may not have regularly, uh, and it instructs instructs us to give uh, what we need to know. We can learn from music. We can learn from music and we our ideas can be expanded as a result. And it invites us. It invites us to paint pictures into worlds that we would not see and understand. And I think that's significant for us tonight as we talk about uh, this international movement. And so it is a motivational tool. It is an inspirational tool. It is a restorative tool. It is a justice tool as well. And we're going to see that taking place even tonight as we look at this thing. And so uh, Dr. Williams is going to uh, unpack and talk about as we look at um, international music, and as we look at international music as a justice movement and as a global movement of voice of people, we can't do that without understanding the history of the dias diaspora and how things happen. So Dr. Williams is going to open that up and, and blow our minds right with this thing here real quick. Yes, yeah, so I want to show something. Just before I go to the graphic, though, I think it was an important piece that you just said, Dr. Small, about how music invites us, right? Because music um, is a communal tool that does all those things that you talked about, but it invites us also in the movement, invites us into communal singing, and invites us to, to move together, right? And so those are some things that, that are, I think are extremely important. Um, I want to show this graphic um, that helps us to kind of um, give framework to uh, what it is that we'll be talking about tonight, particularly with this whole global piece with regard to um, our music. So I'm going to hit play right now and I, I'm, I'm going to be talking over. You see the year um, up top um, and down bottom, you will see uh, the numbers of people who were moved. So this is a graphic that is talking about the trans not, not transatlantic slave trade, the triangular slave trade, triangular slave trade. And it, it, for a while, you know, people call it the transatlantic slave trade, but the Atlantic didn't do anything with regards to this trade, right? This is the triangular slave trade between uh, West Coast of Africa, South Central America, 
uh, or, or the Americas and then back up to, uh, you know, Britain, London and points north like that. Well, as you see these dots going, well, these dots represent our ships that are carrying our ancestors in those ships. And so as you look at these ships that are going, one of the things, if you see where the United States is, you'll see that not a whole lot of ships came this way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot of ships came this way. Most of the ships and most of the trade of, uh, of black bodies came from west coast of Africa to South and Central America, particularly that spot uh, that is now uh, Haiti and Dominican Republic and all of those type spaces when it hits Central America. But South America, you see Brazil and all of those points down there. Um, I remember my pastor used to joke, he said, George Bush didn't even know it was black people in Brazil. 80 million people in black Brazil. Only about 5% of our ancestors came north to, um, came north to uh, North America, right? As a matter of fact, there was one, there was one, um, one meme I saw that said the only difference between black folk in North America, Central America, South America is a boat stop. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? And so when we think about the diaspora or the dispersion or how we are dispersed, you'll see as these as these years go on, right? Most of those things, most of those ships came straight to uh, South and Central America and very little came up. Now, why is that important? That's important because as we begin to talk about these regions that Dr. Small is going to talk about, some of these regions have different areas and different pieces with regard uh, to music, all right? And so I'm gonna stop to share there, but I hope that gives you some kind of framework for where our people were dispersed and then the music that's attached to uh, those types, those those areas and those places. Doc? Yeah, we understand, um, or if you don't understand, you need to know, uh, we've shared this before. There are more people of color, Africans who have been transported and who live currently now in Brazil than there are yeah. in the United States and Canada combined. combined. There are more black folks, like look like you and me, black folks in Brazil than there are in the United States and Canada combined. They don't tell you about that. You don't know That's about right. that kind of thing. Um, and it, when you watch the graphic, you saw a lot headed to Cuba, you saw a lot headed to areas of Haiti. Um, and why is that? Because a lot of times uh, the Dutch and the Spanish made their way uh, into those particular areas. That's why, you know, you have um, certain places, you know, in, in the islands that still have Dutch um, kind of connotations and cultures and things of that nature. There's a lot of transference that took place, the transferring of African bodies into that area. And so um, even now uh, that when you talk about places like Panama, you talk about mm -hmm. places like Brazil, you talk about uh, you know um, Central American uh, countries, uh, you talk about Chile, even Peru, you talk about how uh, the, the, the different uh, kinds of places, because again, we have to talk about uh, the colonization. So as the Spanish went through uh, yeah. into South America, all of that began to expand and including some of some people may have heard of or know of uh, a group called uh, the Quilombo um, that, who are in Brazil, who were a community of escaped slaves that act, act actually a maroon community. Maroon community. Those of us, we know what a maroon community is. The slaves that escaped and formed their own community. And because they were so uh, adamant about being a community, even when white folks tried to come in and get them, they would fight them back out. And so uh, the Colombo, uh, the Colimbo uh, in South uh, America and Brazil uh, have a, a culture and a community um, that was right on the coast of Brazil. And it was a, a very, very big um, thing. And so with all of that, it takes place. And you so as we make this connection and we talk about uh, 
Africans being enslaved, going into these places, actually, there are always going to be places of oppression, right? So if they're, if they're going enslaved, they're going to operate in places of oppression. They're going to express their um, reluctance. They're going to respect, res, res, uh, reflect their revolt. They're going to reflect their opposition to what's taking place uh, in their lifestyle. And that's going to show up in their music as well. And yeah. so uh, we have in the islands of, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there was just this one piece that, that we didn't touch on. This is a whole different area of study, but there's also, um, so we talked about the West African. There's also um, um, studies about the East African slave trade that went the other way, right? Mm -hmm. Don't have time to get into all that, but we saw, you know, so that's just a whole nother piece that I want to put yeah. out there. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so, it, so when we look at music, Right. As we look at music as as a global tool of articulating the experience of justice, we look at um, reggae in Jamaica. We look at the salsa or uh, 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 in Cuba and Puerto Rico. We look at but ba ba uh, bachata in the Dominican Republic. We hear uh, samba and bossa nova in Brazil. Uh, the mariachis, you know, the big the mariachis with the big uh, guitars and stuff, and the nor nor uh, nortero uh, in Mexico. And we hear the Afrobeat in Nigeria uh, that still has a presence and still speaks to a a sense of justice for a whole host of reasons that will get into in a little while. And so in between the rhythm and the dancing, which is, you know, part of what we do in between uh, the harmony of our expression and our connection to movement and our expression of the body and understanding, like we said last week, that it is not a separation of the secular and the divine, but, but our bodies operate in spirit as well. Our bodies operate in movement, our bodies connect. And so in all of that, when people see people from the outside, when they see what's taking place and they see what's going on, they see it as, oh, okay, well, this is just musical expression. This is just what dance looks like. No, it's an articulation of freedom. It's an articulation of harmony. It's an articulation of justice and our and and how we speak to the injustices or how we speak to or articulate uh, the different things that happen in our lives. And so it's a denunciation of the poverty that's been experienced of the talking about the exploiters, uh, landlords uh, that exploit- uh, Colonizers. <laughs> right, colonizers and marginalizers and the injustice to the poor. And so music still plays a very big part of that. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna continue to just expand in that and look at that uh, as a little bit while, and we'll make the connection uh, for all of our people who are getting nervous. We will make the connection to the biblical <laughs> text in a little while. Uh, but uh, Dr. Williams is gonna expand this thing uh, and talk about uh, this a little bit more. So you saw, you saw the dots that were going from west coast of Africa to central South America, some coming to uh, North America and points north. Um, and as African people were brought to this new land, brutalized in this new, in this new land, uh, seasoned, they had these seasoning processes that we saw. Uh, one of the things that tied a thread between them and all of the Americas and, and what happened out North, Central and South Americas uh, was not only their African derived religious traditions, which we probably need to do a whole Bible study on as well, because people be called, people call what well, you know, voodoo, that's the devil, da, da 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 da. No, that's part of who it is that we are. Santeria, Condomble, all of these places, right? Again, the only difference is a boat stop, right? And how we've infused all of that into our African American uh, understanding of Christianity. So that's a whole nother Bible study we may, we need to do. Um, but but and so it's not only the African derived religious traditions, but also the music that we're talking about, right? One author said that African musical traits as the trans uh, as the triangular slave trade, you know, went that just the traits would still go like wildfire. And so in that seasoning process, when they tried to take out, out of you everything that made you think about and remember African, that seasoning process where they tried to get out of you the African sensibilities that were inherent in them, they could not get it out of them because it was authentically in them. And not only was it authentically in them, but it spread like wildfire, right? It spread to the, all of these different places. So you had, you had like, like Doc said, Haiti and or Santo Domingo, right? You had Haiti, you had all of these islands, you had all of the Brazil, you have uh, down Mexico, all of these places, and you had some similarities 
um, in terms in terms of the music. Some of the characteristics of African music are outlined in the book Africanisms. Good book, Africanisms, Africanisms by Joseph Holloway. And in a chapter entitled Africanisms in African American Music, Holloway says that the objective of African music is not necessarily to produce sounds agreeable to the ear, very, very important, but to translate everyday experiences into living sound. Did y'all hear what I was just saying? It's not necessarily only to produce sounds that make your ear feel good, but to translate everyday experiences into living sound. And so if my everyday experience is guttural, you're going to get a guttural moan, whatever. If my everyday experience or the experience I have today is joy, you're going to have a joyful beat that comes with it. If my experience is something like a melancholy something, you're going to have a melancholy move. One, one example of that in terms of, and I know I'm going, I'm going off script a little bit, but even in, 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 the, um, in the song by John Coltrane entitled Alabama, mm-hmm. right? This ain't this ain't the end, but it's part of the international. It's part of the diaspora, right? In the song, in the song Alabama, it starts off real slow, but in the middle of it, you hear like the the, the saxophone screaming and wailing and going. And what he was doing was this was a song about when those four little girls got killed in Birmingham, Alabama, right? The song, title of the song is Alabama. Go back and listen to it uh, when you get a chance. But but it's about this everyday experience, right? It doesn't have to be agreeable to the ear, but it's translating our experiences that sometimes people who are on the outside don't know that this is, the, and you can feel, literally feel that thing, right? So right. so if we talk about, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, you know, I, and I'm not, not to get off script, not to get off script, because you know. No, you no, know, no, it's, it's, it's there, it's there. You know, we can do it, but. I think, and this is this is next week, so we ain't tripping. But I think mm-hmm. that's what some of us, when I say some of us, you and I, we have problems with this current hip hop movement because mm-hmm. it is all about the beat, right? Yeah. And what they're saying is not a guttural how we feel about it. It is not a emotive place right. of necessarily meaning, right? It, it becomes this, you know. And and I and I'm not dumping. I'm not oh, dumping. Oh, I'm down it. But just say yeah, it, it's a it's a different yeah 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 yeah. It's a so so let's look. It's, it's just different. It's just different. We we'll just say it's not different, right? So let's look at a few. Let's look at a few. <laughs> let's look at a few of these different types of music, right? We're gonna look at a couple, and then we're gonna start making this connection for those, as Doctor said, who's getting nervous, right? So if we look at if we look at if we go to the reggae piece, right? If we go to the reggae piece, um, there are estimates that say somewhere about six hundred thousand total enslaved Africans were brought to Jamaica, right? Jamaica, which was under British rule up until the late 1900s, the late 1900s, right? Cam Gephardt says in his article, Reggae Music and Its Ties to Africa, that reggae exhibits traits of African music, heavy use of guitars, drums, and other percussive instruments like cowbells and shakers and anything. And watch this, Doc talked earlier about the body. You can use your body. Right. You're using all of who you are to, to give the expression. Right. And so in addition to, to the percussive instruments and the guitars and drums and, and the liberation themes that come through the lyrics, it's also call and response. Right. And so when we talked about when we talked about um, music being inviting. Right. That call and response piece is, is important. So reggae and reggae is in particular noted for its social criticism, its lyrics of liberation that feed through the beat. Watch this to give voice to the experience, not only in the music, but in, in the lyrics, right? So that the music and the lyrics, you know, end up, listen to some, well, we'll talk about some, but you, some Peter Tosh and some, and some Barley and some, yeah, all of those types of folks, right. it really, really brings to bear um, what some of that looks like. Right, it is the, it is the um, um, what do you call it? It is the offshoot of Ska music yeah in jamaica yeah. which was very based on political expression and articulation um and so reggae uh begins to take that that tone and begins to move with the whalers and bob marley and they begin to shift into that and so we need to note we need to note there's a lot of conversation as we talk about this um there's a lot of conversation about uh the volume um melville Herskovitz, 
um, states that it's about maybe uh, in the myth of the Negro past, his book, the myth, the myth of the Negro past, about 18 to 22 million Africans from Africa. Now, people have used incredible numbers, um, but what they can kind of work from the documentation uh, is about anywhere from 18 to 22 million Africans. Um, and we can add maybe a million and two based upon the ones that weren't recorded or documented. Right. Um, right. But if we do that to what Dr. Williams says to his point, if you say 18, let's say 25 million Africans moved from Africa to uh, the Americas, right? F for 5% of that to only go to the United States, right? That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a, a volume number, but the majority of, eight, of 25 million Africans have gone oh. to Central and su Southern America. That's, that's quite 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 a um quite a statement and quite to understand how how the movement of oppression went global like literally, literally. Like, how the movement of oppression went global like the whole idea of race and what and what race means and and what it me meant to be of a certain race and and what that meant you were deserving of to be experienced in those moments that that we are beginning to understand the foundation of how that works and how it continues to work and manifest itself even today. So reggae, like go ahead. With, with them, with those numbers, and I just, I just want to hit back on, like with those numbers, eighteen to twenty-two million, right? So if only six hundred stop in Jamaica, think about all of the other places, right? Right. right. I mean, yeah. eighteen That's to twenty-two million. That's right. Phenomenal. It's 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 yeah. Man, it's, 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 a, it's a phenomenal thing to even think about, to even process yeah. yourself. Um, yeah. And I, I, I will go into the mindset that causes you to do it. But, you know, that's, that's a whole other, that's a that's whole a other mistake too. But yeah. um, so, so we have reggae in Jamaica, which, which has its political bent. Uh, then we have Nueva Trova. Nueva Trova is a, is a Cuban um, uh, movement of revolutionary music, which also went Nueva Trova, meaning new song, right? The new song, because Trova was a brand of uh, Cuban music and it started around eight, 1968 um, after the Cuban revolution, after Castro, you know, and all of that and the takeover and everything else. And the music st was political and really started off political and it began to spread throughout Latin America because of the progressive politicized lyrics and everything that was taking place. And so you have, again, this movement of people who are being exploited, who then articulate their exploitation and their feelings about what is happening through their music. And so the infusion of music from different influences does not remove the level of oppression, right? So, so when you hear salsa or you hear, um, you know, uh, merengue and those and those those different kinds of sounds and music they are often influenced by jazz and american musics and other influences as well uh which is what um makes um new orleans such a attractive place, right? It makes it such a mixed bag, right? When we talk about Jackson Square and all that took place and jazz being formed in Jackson Square because all of these different vibes and all of these different cultures came together. Um, it really does speak to the influences from other places that begin to literally amalgamate to uh, understanding this, this feeling and this vibe that begins to take off in other places. See, once, once somebody uh, or once a people or a person begins to speak um, about what is wrong, other people will chime in, right? It's you inviting. Ever been in a line? It's right, inviting. right. Ever been in a line? Ever been in a line somewhere and the service is poor? We either at a restaurant or at a business or whatever, and somebody says, "Well, what's taking so long?" And then everybody else chimes in. Like when when one articulates that there is something that needs to be corrected, other folk will chime in, and so with this whoever. Um, 
with Reva Trova, you know, that begins to talk about the political movement and, and, and the results of such, it begins to spread. It begins to spread throughout Latin America because other people, because the experience is the same. Uh, and not to mention, you know, we have the, the spirituals uh, and gospel and the blues that begin to translate in mm -hmm. America as well. And so the infu infusions happen. Um, and the articulation takes place. So it creates a level of expression uh, and because it is an experience through song. How do you articulate the experience through song? Music of revolution uh, is everywhere regardless of geography. And I think um, when you look at that and you look and you combine that with the triangular slave trade and you look at the experiences, then you, it is easy to understand why music is so, uh, why, why music it can be a thing of justice similarly throughout, throughout the area. And so we see and the and same- also, yeah. And also real quick with that, before you go, also re referring back to uh, something we said last week, that's why also creatives and, yeah. mu and particularly music musicians, artists, poets, right are really, really integral um, in movement building and in this case, movement music, right? right. Uh, we refer to Marvin, we refer to some other folks even in hip hop like Kendrick, um, but, but, but yeah, that, that's, that's an important piece to note. Yeah, I think um, uh, I was talking about it just yesterday to, to talk about the creative and what the creative mind does in terms of of, of, of reading the tea leaves of the time. Yeah, what is his yeah. name? Jonathan Ellis? Is his name Jonathan Ellis? Um, the brother who did the um, piece, Critical Race Theory? Did you see the painting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the mm -hmm. painting, Critical Race <laughs> Theory? Um, if you can, look that up. It is an awesome piece of a critique of a social, um, of, a, of, of the times. I um, mean, it, it is a painting uh, done. I think his name is Ellis, so forgive me, or, or Harris, for, forgive me. I think the brother, the brother's name is, but the painting is called Critical Race Theory. Um, and it's a very, very poignant piece about what, you know, society is trying to do to the history of African-American people uh, overall uh, in the country. And so creatives understand the time and so they articulate mm -hmm. it in a way that it resonates with people um and right. to and to uh the author's point of africanisms it ain't about whether or not you like it <laughs> it's right. not about whether or not it's agreeable right. you know it is and it's not about whether or not it's even what some people would say um you know accurate Right. You know, that was, you know, not to go back. I, gu I guess my spirit is really calling the hip hop. Right. But not to go back. But that's that was the critique of hip hop early on. Well, this ain't music. Right. And, 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 and what made the movement so powerful was we said, we don't care if y'all think this is music. Okay, right. <laughs> right. This is this is what this is. And so um, we began to hear and we begin to articulate those things in that way. But here we go. Here we go, Doc. So everybody can be good. The same kind of expression, for those of y'all who are getting nervous, right? Yeah. The same kind of expression that is found in the Psalms that we look at in the sacred text that we read and that we study and that we remember and that we cherish and that we, you know, get all warm and fuzzy in our heart when we hear it in, in a building. Uh, those, uh, they are influenced by the same kinds of context that like the writers of many of these Psalms experience the same kind of levels of oppression and experiences of oppression that create the songs in which they articulate in this, in our, in in the sacred text. Um, so Psalm 137, Psalm 137 uh, verses one through six says, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept. This is a powerful piece right here. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars, we hung our harps uh, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord of, in a foreign, while in a foreign land. I, if I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. That is an awesome, awesome, awesome text, man. That is an awesome text in song. Understand what's taking place. They said our hearts broke 
They said our yeah. hearts were weeping when we looked at what happened to Zion, when we looked at what happened to Jerusalem, when we saw what Babylon, the empire, how they destroyed the temple, how they destroyed the city of Jerusalem, our hearts wept. And what they wanted us to do while we watched ruins, they said, sing us a happy song. Entertain us. Right. Entertain us. Put on a happy dance, song. Dance, and, dance a jig for us. Yes, yes. Sing, dance, sing, sing, and dance. Sing, Sing a yeah. sing and dance for us, yeah. right? Yeah. Entertain us like while we, while right. we make mockery of your of your homeland, and while we make mockery of those things that are precious to you, while we make mockery of sing, sing us a song, right? Yeah. We can translate that to today in the entertainment business because some folk don't want folks because what this also does is again, it's not only tell about liberation, but it's also reminding the people of their story, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Entertain us. Go ahead. So, 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 look. Can I, can I, can I push a little bit so we get some, push it. some so we go get some some hate mail? So, Let's do it. so we didn't hire. We ain't hiring no black coaches. How about that? We ain't hiring no black coaches. But go ahead and entertain us for the halftime show. Entertain us for halftime. <laughs> right. We ain't gonna hire no black. Since, coaches. Ain't no just, since y'all in LA, why don't you go and bring Dre in? Go ahead, and bring and then he do all his songs and da 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 da. And it was a banging halftime show. Let me, I let know, me just it was, say the that. The halftime show was dope. Music is music. But don't, right? take, but don't take that off the fact that y'all just want to entertain us. Right, right. Entertain. Right. Make, uh, make sure everything is looks and appears to be okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing in this text. What they do, what do they say? They said, on the poplars, on the trees, we hung our harps for their captors asked us for songs. Listen, don't miss this. I said, I think I preached this last week. Don't miss this. This is protest. This they said, protest. we hung our harps on the poplar trees. They said they wanted us to sing. We refused. We refused to, to succumb to entertain them. So we protested. We hung our harps on the poplar trees, right? There is, there is protest in, in, this, in, in, this, in this situation because of what's taking place. All and right? in the song. Yeah. Right. And it's in song. Right. So listen. So listen to this. So listen to these words. It says, today I invite you to walk in my shoes to show you what your ideals have created. We are human, though you and I do not think the same. Do not demean us and treat us like animals. This is my way of saying my people are crying. I hear their voice. No more lies. My people demand freedom, no more doctrines. No longer shall I cry fatherland or death, but fatherland and life and begin to build what we dreamed of, what they destroyed with their hands. It's all over now. It has long been time to break the silence. It's all over now. The laughter has stopped and the tears are flowing. It's all over now. And we have no fear. The charade has ended. It's all over. We are 62 years of suffering. You would tell Parita Evita, meaning homeland and life, that that in in Cuba, uh, the Cuban um, the the Cuban uh, slogan for for Cuba, you know, like E pluribus unum for the United States, out of many one, whichever the heck that means. That but, means. Uh, <laughs> right, but but homeland or life, Patria e, um, Evita, uh, homeland or life. It was initially homeland or death meaning that this was going to be our homeland or we were going to die. It was a statement of homeland to die. But this movement, you will tell in this group, right, as they sing, they saying, you know what? It is no longer about homeland or death. It is about homeland or life, that the regime that is working is no longer functional or working. And we need to talk about how we do this thing differently, right? So even in the song, right, even in the presence of the uh, Nueva Trova, even in the sense of they, they are operating in the place of the political, they're operating in the place of movement and change and shifting. All right. Mm -hmm. And that's Cuba. Right. So y'all understand this. This is still Latin America. So they're dealing with those kinds of things. All right. So um, look at uh, the psalm that's most often recited. We don't think about this thing, uh, Doc. We do not think about this uh, this psalm in 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 so many powerful different ways. We look at it as a very genteel movement. We look at it mm -hmm. as a very passive uh, uh, phraseology that is simply something to give us a level of encouragement on some level. But we don't look at the the context, right? The, mm -hmm. the backdrop of what's taking place, right? The mm -hmm. writer is trying to convey something deep. Um, and the question is, I want, you, I want you to ask yourself as you hear it, is he joyous? Is the writer joyous or is the writer looking 
for strength from an opposing situation? Is he joyous or is he legitimately looking? Yeah. Uh -huh. Or is he in Mr. some mess? <laughs> right. We got to encourage himself. Yeah. All right. So look, here it is. Psalm 23. Right, I'm messing, I'm messing up some of y'all day already. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley or the valley of death, whichever translation you prefer, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ask yourself, is this, is this a, a place where he's, the writer is, is in a joyous place or is he trying to remind himself? Got to right? remind he, himself about it. Yes, right? When he talks about, when he talks about being in the valley, Right, right. I mean, you say, even though I walk, he ain't say, even though I did walk, there ain't no past tense in that, right? I'm <laughs> Right. He said, even though I walk. Right. So listen. So listen to these. Listen to this one. Right. And and there, there have been moments, total disclosure, there have been moments when I've heard this in song sitting by myself where tears have been shed. And this is for real. All right. So listen. But listen to this. Listen to this of, of encouragement. Right. Psalm 23 of encouragement, of, of, of being restored, of, of, of improving or or encouraging themselves in a bad situation. Old pirates, yes, they rabbi, sold I to the merchant ships, minutes after they took I from the bottomless pit. But my hand was made strong by the hand of the almighty. We forward in this generation triumphantly. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Because all I ever have is redemption song. Here it is emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energy because none of them can stop the time. How long shall they kill our prophets? While we stand aside and look, we forward in this generation. We got to fulfill the book. Some say it's just a part of it, sorry. We've got to fulfill the book. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Because all I ever have is redemption songs. Bob Marley. Redemption song is the name of the song, Bob Marley. Do you talk about encouragement? When you talk about like just to just to understand the process of that thing. The process and the challenge, right? Yes. Yes. None can free our mind. <laughs> right. 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 Why are you right. looking? So this gets back to the whole liberation authenticity. Why are you looking for somebody else to free your mind? Yeah. Right. Or, or as Malcolm right. said, why are you looking for your enemies to teach you your, your people your story and your children your story? Right? right. None but ourselves can free our minds. Right. Yeah, that that thing, that thing. How long should it Emancipate they yourself. Emancipate Sir? yourself. Free yourself. Sir. Sir. For mental safety. Sir. None but ourselves can free our mind. That, that, now, let, let, and let's talk about this. And let's talk about this part. And, and my, my, me and my best friend have said this several times. You must be anointed by the Holy Spirit to write that. Got to be. <laughs> you must be Got under to. the direction. Y'all, if y'all have not heard Redemption Song by Bob Marley, pull it up and play it and sit still. What? Listen to it with your shoes off. <laughs> like for real like sit still live version type too right right sit still and just process yeah. that thing, right yeah. and, and 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 take that in as song right right psalm 23 says though i walk through the valley right yep. you can almost you can almost he can almost strum the same music behind psalm 23 like literally and the music like fits the lyric right, right. like literally like literally yeah. so so I'm, I'm gonna do one more and then uh, Red's going to explain me, this, this next song to you. You know, let me let me, yeah, let, me let, let me let me get in there. Let me get in. Right, let me get in. Right, work this Afro beat. So look, <laughs> Psalm one twelve. So Psalm one twelve, verses six through ten says, "Surely the righteous will never be shaken. 
They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear or bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. All right. Now, go ahead. Oh, so, so take that text. That's Psalm 112. Look, and watch the juxtaposition, right, of the righteous against the wicked. Right. Righteous will never be shaken. Be remembered. They will have no fear. Bad news. Hearts are secure. Freely scattered their gifts. The wicked will see this and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth, waste away. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we go if we go to Nigeria, West Africa. Yeah. And we go to this place called the shrine <laughs> back in early mid 70s, late 60s into the 70s. You're going to walk into the shrine and you're going to see this young. You're going to see this brother. Probably with no shirt on, gonna have horns everywhere, with 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 the markings on them, right? The tribal markings on them. His name is gonna be Fela Kuti, and we he will have he will have once he and I just found this out. He coined the phrase Afrobeat in a cry, mm. right? He coined it in a cry, and part of the reason he called it Afrobeat because he had been influenced by James Brown's political pieces, right? And so he didn't want to just call it soul, so he called it Afrobeat, right? Mm -hmm. But listen to this song. Listen to this song by, by Fela. It says, zombie no go go, unless you tell him to go, zombie. Zombie go, no go stop, unless you tell him stop, zombie. Zombie no go turn, unless you tell him turn, zombie. Zombie no go think, unless you tell him think, zombie. Go and kill, Joro, Joro, Joro. Go and die, Joro, Joro, Joro. <laughs> Go and quench. Joe Joe. Put them for reverse. Joe Joe. Go and quench. Joe Joe. Go and kill. Joe Joe. Go and die. Joe Joe. Put them for reverse. Joe Joe. So watch. I know it don't. I know it don't sound like much, but when you get to when you get to the to the background behind the music, if you will, in this time when he wrote this song. Uh, Fela Kuti, he wrote this Afrobeat song, Zombie, the song Zombie, was critical of the establishment and the oppressive military regime in Nigeria, right? And so in the song, he compares the Nigerian military to zombies who follow orders with no thought for whether or not it's right or wrong. So when you hear him say, when you hear him say, zombie no go go, unless you tell him to go. Right. Zombie no go stop, unless you tell him to stop. He's saying these people in the military are being used and appropriate to kill their own people. Right. 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 And that's what happened, actually, as a result of this song. The Nigerians got mad. They went and demolished the shrine. They went and, and hurt some of his folk and all this type of stuff. It was a song that infuriated the regime and caused the government forces to attack the shrine and attack his community, leaving people injured. Right. And so that's just the that's just a, a snapshot of some of the music that that Fela did. And if if you like, kind of look at him, there was a shift in his music, I think, after the exposure to James Brown. And James Brown actually exposure to him, right? I was reading, I was reading about uh I was reading an article where uh, some of James Brown musicians, of which Bootsy Collins was one, right? Right. right. Um, and was reading and talked about how how they influenced each other, right? And they went to learn stuff from Fela, and Fela was learning stuff, and it was almost like I think one of them said like a love-hate relationship because he loved James Brown, but he didn't want to be seen as you know, African James Brown, all this thing. he wanted to have his own identity or whatever, right? Ego will um, take place. <laughs> ego will ego will show ego up. Ego will come. <laughs> ego will come, right? And so, but 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 he has songs like zombie, what water get no enemy, right? Talking about what, right? One of my favorite songs by Fela has no lyrics. Fight to the finish. It's a song called Fight to the Finish. Yeah. And when you hear that song, it literally, if you in the fight, you're gonna fight to the finish. It's, it's a literal, it's a literal embodiment mm -hmm. of revolution, of inspiration, of liberation, right? right. Yeah. Fela Kuti and, and Afrobeat. Um, and then and then we, I know we keep going to this hip hop thing, um, but a lot of a lot of we're gonna talk about it next week, and maybe for next two weeks. But I promise we are. But but a lot, a lot of uh artists, well, I'll say some artists, like like a common, right? Like a most and Talib, right? 
those folks have been influenced. Matter of fact, I think, uh, is it on like Water for Chocolate? Um, where, where Rashid, what Common has a song on there and it's like almost a tribute and an ode to Fella, right? And some of some of the folks have brought some of his stuff in. So the Afro beat is just he another got example. Huh? He got a new one out. See, we gonna, he got a new one out called When We Move. A new one out. That when one, that move. one with Black Thought. Right. Ooh, when we move. We, yeah. when we move, right? Yeah. And it's almost like they in the shrine. Right. Yeah. Right. We're gonna get back, we're gonna get back to it. We're gonna get back to it next week. But 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 what you see is a thread that is run through. The, the music in Cuba, through reggae, through Afrobeat, right? And we're going to see show enough next week in the liberation forms of hip-hop. And same threads and themes are worn, are worn, as we've already talked about, through R&B and through gospel music. Why? Because these are songs, and jazz, these are songs, as it talked about, that, that employ the body and employ um, those pieces that we talked about in terms of the characteristics of African music, not African American, but African music. The objective is not always necessarily to produce sounds, although it may still do it sometimes, but to translate everyday experiences right. into right. living sound right. and using your body to do so. Yeah, what one of the things, one of the things that um I learned from Zombie, the song Zombie. I mean, and and you know, that that's it's it's crazy how many layers. Um yeah. There's there's a there's a good one, um, but we couldn't use it or play it. It's called expensive um, stuff. Um, so that, nice <laughs> that um that he that he talks about and and he and it's a great story behind it. But Jora Jara Joe, which is what I was saying when he was using the word, because zombie is a little quicker, right? He says go and quench Jora Jara Joe, go and die go Jara, right? So it's a little quicker. But Jora Jara Joe means it literally nothing. It's gibberish. It's hullabaloo, right? So it doesn't mean anything. So, so it's like what you're doing, it almost symbolizes that even though you're following these orders in a zombie frame, it doesn't mean anything. Like, like you're like you're like it is gibberish, like what you're doing is useless. And you know, we can connect that to the the dozens of folk, right? Like we we can we can parallel zombie, the song zombie to January 6th. Like, I mean, like, like if I was, if I was, a, if I was a producer or a director, like, and I have video clips of January 6th, like, I would just like be playing they like Kuti in the back. Go in, drink your dog, go do it. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, it's, it's because, because there is just a mindless operation, um, you know, for 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 baseless self interest, you know, mm -hmm. and so the the I think I think what's important for us to understand is that oppression um, isn't just black and white, right? That oppression right. can sometimes be about power, right? Have and have nots, right? Um, and the right. underside of of Western oppression is really based on um color you know the foundation is color uh, but you know the have or have not is is a part of that movement but uh, the underbelly of it is is color but when you go to other countries of of the same what you're talking about is well, particularly um countries like in, in africa you're talking about the colonialization and imperialism um mm -hmm. that has been influenced in their governing system that often repeat patterns Right, mm -hmm. um, because it is beneficial um, to underdevelop and to keep countries separate and to keep, you know, it it, ben it benefits uh, the colony in in order to do that. Uh, Manning Marable talks about that in how Europe underdeveloped Africa, um, you know, and to understand those those things that 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 chaos is profitable for for some people. That's why war is so, you know. Yeah um you know convenient you know because when we want to do something and we we don't like how that's going to go we go to war uh so to understand the dynamics of what oppression looks like in all of its levels even when the skin is the same or the, the country persons are the same because there's been intervention if you know what because there's been intervention like right this country this country has uh for so long it talks about freedom and democracy here when it's when it's compromised and bastardized what that what that theme is in so many other different places yeah right yeah. um yeah that's what it's used to it's interesting because even now as um 
they're talking about China as as the recolonizing. That's right. Right, as they as they talk about China and how they you know are taking advantage of a minority of people and literally uh, trying to eradicate them and how how can they be in the Olympics? How can they host the Olympics? This is an atrocity because it's a human issue and. Chinese government government has made comment to say that the United States is one to talk, <laughs> like literally, like it, like the Chinese government says, well, the United States is really one to talk, you know, you. Um, in terms of their policies and what is taking place in in terms of this country. So yeah, but, right. but even with Chinese trying to, even with you know, in recent years, Chinese trying to recolonize the places in Africa, right? Right. right. It's the same, it's the same, trying to follow a similar playbook as as Berlin Conference. And um and uh what 1836? Yeah. Um but so. something like that. Yeah, you say that? So. Oh, yeah, it's you, it's you. You say so. I'm gonna let you live with that. You say so, that's it. That's the one. Um <laughs> that's the date, the 36. Um all right, so one more. So one more before we before we let y'all go. Uh for our producers come and get us. I'm I'm I'm, I'm I feel a hook coming very, very quickly. So Psalm 46, Psalm 46, um, a Psalm of the Sons of Korah uh says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at, at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done and the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease and the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So again, as Dr. Williams talked about, right, there, there is this restorative place, right, that even though all of this, all of these things are happening, even though the people are going through this thing, there is a God that is going to intervene, right, and a God that is going to shift, right. Now, this, this theme is permeated through the biblical text, and the first time we hear it um, is in the book of Exodus, Right. Yep. And so in the book of Exodus, it talks about the movement, the freedom of God's people, the liberation of God's people from the hand of empire of the Egyptians. And so that fella, Bob Nesta Marley, honorable mention, right, has this book, is, uh, has this song where he says, men and people will fight you now when you see John light, John mean God. Right. Let me tell you, you're not wrong because everything is all right. So we're going to walk through the roads of creation, we the generation trod through great tribulation. Open your eyes and look within. Are you satisfied with the life you're living? We know where we're going and we know where we're from. We're leaving Babylon and going to our fatherland. Exodus, movement of Jah people. Right. Send us another brother Moses going across the Red Sea. M movement of Jah people. Send us another brother Moses. That in in the in the faith and tradition of Rastafarianism, Babylon is the symbol of the oppressor. So when you hear folk talk about Babylon, right, it is not just police. They will talk about Babylon being police, but also it represents the bigger idea of oppression, right? Mm -hmm. So when Bob Marley says we're leaving Babylon, right, yeah. and go into our fatherland, it says we're leaving the oppressor, right? This is an exodus. It is a movement of God's people, that God's people are moving to a different place. Rest restoration is still happening. What was you going to say, yeah. Dr. Sorry. No, I was saying, I was saying it's not just, it's not just a uh, place, it's empire, right? Right. right. And everything that empire represents. Right. Place, right. people, right. policies, all of that right. mindset, mind thought, right? Because you can leave, you can leave somewhere a place and that place still be inside of you, right? right? 
Is, um, isn't that the issue? Isn't that the issue of, of, man. of the wilderness? And that the issue of the wilderness that they that oh, they man. could not get to the promised land because it was too much Egypt in them. Right? Too much Egypt in them. It was too right? much Egypt in them. Right. So yeah. so you know that 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 song Exodus man is is more than just about Exodus from place. It's also Exodus from anything one that inhibits who it is that you authentically are, and two that inhibits what it is that it takes for you to live in human thriving, not just surviving, right? right. Um, Which, yeah. and, and, and I must say this again, my brother, you must sit down and listen to it. Don't take our word for it. Listen to our exodus, take your shoes off, sit there and process and just listen to the, the listen to the energy of the song, yeah. right? Listen to the energy of the song. Um, and translate that energy, um, if you can, in your imagination, to the writers of some of the psalms that were written. Mm -hmm. right? That because that is the thrust. That 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 is the thrust. That is the energy that God is going to restore. That there is a change. There's a change coming, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a shift that is going to take place. So it's it's um it's there's there's powerful music all across the world and all across the globe that that we believe um, we have been blessed to share and we, or, or receive and experience. And as people of the diaspora, I think it is important for us to, to acknowledge that and to recognize just how significant and powerful that is. Um, so yeah, man, anything else, Doc, as we do this thing? No, I'm gonna say what I said last week, get you a song. That's right, that's right. You don't have it already. And not just get you a song, we want to expand. Get you a song that is not made, that is not R&B, that is not um, um, necessarily hip hop or whatever. Look at some of these other genres that, that, that our people have created, right? Check out Afrobeat, check out some of the songs we talked about tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Check out a Peter Tosh, check out a Bob Marley, check out um, some other folks who- Sonny Oksum, uh, yeah, check out- Sonny Oksum, yeah, that, check, out, check out some of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check out do do some uh do some Maybe uh Smith, Black on. Mombaza. Check out um oh man the, the South African brothers. Um Hugh Masakela. Yeah, Hugh Masakela. Check out, you know, you know, the different the different genres that speak to the uh, energy and the spirit. Um, yeah. What's her name? Uh South Africa. Uh, what's her name? Um who Mary Makiba? Mary Makiba. Miriam yeah, Makiba. Miriam Makiba. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. All of those, all of those pieces. There, there are, there are places and 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 musics that feed and encourage. Um, you know, even even like you know, I mean, and they're American, but they still have a, they still got a crazy vibe. Sweet Honey in the Rock. You know, mm -hmm. just, yeah, just just the, just just different vibes, um, and how you know it speaks to certain conditions and certain experiences that one has in this journey. Um, so, yeah. So listen, here it is, though. Bam. <laughs> um, so, so here it is. Here it is, though. Oh, I think. Oh. Right, right, right. I think for the next two weeks. For the next two weeks. We need to just do urban culture music, yo. Just, just do it, yo. Next two weeks, right. yo. Just, just do hip hop, yo. Straight, yo. Hip hop, it. yo. We love, yo. Listen, we are fans of all music, but we need, as you can see, it's gonna take a minute for us to talk about hip hop. We got words, we got things, we got thoughts. So words, next, history. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah. next week, um, we are gonna start this hip hop thing, and then the following week we gonna we gonna close it out. So we got two more weeks, and we we hope it's a blessing to you. When we put this thing down. So um, make sure uh, that you are tuning in um, with us on uh, Sunday, 10 a.m. Uh, we had a little technical difficulty, New Calvary. We apologize about that, but we got that fixed. We got everything squared away. Um, so we should be good at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as we First come to worship church. together. Oh, go ahead. My fault. Go ahead. And First then, back to church, 10, 10 30 Central, uh, 10 30 Central time. So he's 10 o'clock Eastern, 10 30 Central. So once you finish watching 10 o'clock Eastern, just go and flip over. And uh, check us out at First Baptist Church of University Park, 1030 Central, uh, which is 1130 Eastern. Yeah, right. definitely, 
definitely. So listen, thank you all very, very much. We appreciate um, your uh, engagement. We appreciate the love that is expressed. We, we've, we've gotten, um, let me just say this real quick. We've gotten love from other pastors and stuff who have heard what's going on and they've reached out to us and said, yo, we really appreciate this. This looks really, really good. So I just want to thank uh, some clergy folk, you know, who have reached yeah. out and, you know, who have acknowledged and, you know, and listen, man, this is, this is just what we do. Y'all, y'all, yeah, we, you sitting in uh, one of our living rooms right now, like literally, like, <laughs> like this is just how we kick it when we get together and talk and enjoy each other's uh, company. So uh, we just, we, so we're grateful for you all for just sitting in, um, and letting us build and letting us create. Um, and hopefully, very hopefully, it just expands your understanding of what it means to be a spiritual being and what it means to be a person of spirit and a person of faith, uh, particularly as it pertains to your context, your history, uh, and your people. And so, you know, we look forward to building with you guys um, next week, uh, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time and 6.30 Central Standard Time. We look to, we look to build and have a good time. Yes, sir. I have nothing. All right. So let's close out. Let's close out with a word of prayer. God, we love you so much. We are grateful for your presence. We thank you for continuing to build with us and to show and reveal to us your will and your way. As we continue to grow, God, show us those places. Uh, where we might not stumble. Show us those places where we might be able to recover. Show us those places where we turn to you for strength and that where we are led. We are grateful, God, for the opportunity to worship together. Thank you for sister churches who believe in you, who believe in your power, who believe in your grace, and who walk in it day after day. So God, let us hear the song in our spirit. Let us resonate with the song in our soul. Let it speak to our hearts as we go forward and that God, you might in all things receive glory. We pray, Lord God, for um, this uh, day. We pray, God, for these pastors. We pray, God, for these churches and whoever needs prayer, those who are sick, those who are on the mend, those who are desolate, those who are dealing with emotional stress or financial stresses, God, touch them right now. And in all things, we believe that you will help us to be restored. You will help us to continue to move forward and you will get the glory. It is in the wonderful and majestic name of Jesus that the people of God together say amen. Amen. And amen. I say we're grateful for it all. Love good people. All we'll right. see y'all next week. All right.